Hey guys, Major Cade here, and I got some pressing intel for you. But before we begin, I do want to let you know that the Double Tap Show goes live on Twitch every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link in the description below. I also post new content to this channel every week, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on to stay up to date when new intel goes live. Now with that out of the way, let's debrief. High compress is a way of thinking with the sole purpose to stop you from rushing to your death. Think of it like a switch that you flick on or off depending on the situation. To go into high compression means to be on high alert, to tense up, to expect a gunfight, especially when there is prior evidence that an enemy could be close by. Make sure to pay attention to both sound and visual cues like windows raking, red dots on the minimap, enemy vehicles, footsteps, so on and so forth. You get it, the list goes on forever. But all these things should flick that switch telling you to stop what you're doing and expect the enemy. Because to know of imminent danger and ignore it, that's a fool's errand. You're doing nothing more than collecting supplies for the toughest guy on the block. However, there are rules, laws if you will, when it comes to high compression, and there are no exceptions. These are the list of circumstances where you need to be ready for conflict, no matter what. First up are the points of interest. On the map, no matter the line of deployment, points of interest like scrapyard, quarry, downtown, hospital, superstore, and storage town will always be popular places. And if you're dropping there, you should be hype compressed. Second is unsuppressed engagements. Whether you or the enemy are not running suppressors, a red dot will show up on both the compass and the minimap. Pay attention to this because when the firefight is over, if you come out on top, you should assume that nearby enemies now know of your position, and if they are close enough, they will try to engage. Remember, not running suppressors is an open invitation to a third party. You'll be caught on the reload, or healing, or hovering over your enemy's body like a vulture, looting what cool weapons they had. Remember, winning unsuppressed gunfights does not mean safety, even if the opposite team is white. Third and last is when entering unknown structures. Use caution. Don't rush in. Most of the time, the answer, whether an enemy is there or not, will be clear, as long as you're listening. Call of Duty is a game that is coded in milliseconds. And what I mean by that is that every action has an animation. Harmless all on their own, but when you stack multiple animations, then you start to lose time. Aw oh, shit, gotta get off the X real quick. Fuck. Pop plates. Fuck, 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 fuck. I'm not gonna let you get the chance. Where was I again? Oh yeah. Call of Duty is coded in milliseconds. And what I mean by that is that every action has an animation. Harmless on their own, but when you stack multiple animations, then you start to lose time. Time that is impossible to recover. You are willingly giving the enemy a head start. When rushing up a staircase in a full sprint, by the time you realize that an enemy is waiting at the top, you have to come out of sprint then aim down sight, then actually aim, and however long this takes is up to human error, and finally pull the trigger, followed by every weapon's unique time to kill. Meanwhile, your footsteps gave away your location and direction, all adding up to your demise. But don't take my word for it. Let's do a quick example. But first, we're gonna make four assumptions. The first one is that you and the enemy are both using the exact same weapon, down to the attachments and all. Second, you both have full armor. Third, the enemy is already aiming down sights. Obviously, it's a staircase. And fourth, that you're using your tactical sprint. And for this example, we're going to use the M4A1. With the M4A1, tactical sprint is 400 milliseconds. Remember, this could be either slowed down or sped up depending on the attachment. But to keep things simple, we're going to use the stats of the base M4A1. Aim down sight is 250 milliseconds. The time to kill on a full armor enemy is going to be 576. Again, this is assuming that we have perfect aim and we don't miss a single bullet. Now, since the enemy is using the same weapon, but it's already ADS, 
that's also going to be 576 milliseconds. Add all that up, and in this example, the enemy can kill you before you shoot a single bullet. Worst actually, he can decimate you twice before you can kill him once. In layman's terms, no matter how amazing your reflexes are, how fast your sprint out time is, or how fast your gun can aim down sights, it will never beat having a gun up and expecting the enemy. For these case studies, I'm not going to explain too much. I'm going to put the cue up on screen that made me go into high compression. And if that cue just so happens to be sound, I'm going to boost just that part of the video. That way you can listen. And then after that, it's going to let the case studies do the rest. The next location. Head in this way. Remember that staircase scenario? Yeah. He didn't even get to shoot a single bullet. This one is pretty self-explanatory. The red dots on the map led me to them. Remember, unsuppressed gunfights still means our party. Sometimes, the high compressed cues don't come from sound or visual, they come from straight up gameplay. You got a bounty on you, and the threat is red, time to go into high compressed. Notice how I'm willingly trading visibility and mobility for silence. In a building where the enemy can be in multiple places, this is what I personally like to do, allowing me to know exactly where they are and then plan my attack. Breaking glass at the start of the game. It's a big no-no. This case study is a little different. Because after this gunfight, I realized that he was using an M4A1 and that it wasn't suppressed. My next step is to silence the house. That means opening up this loot box. And then, just take a moment and listen. Like clockwork, third party imminent. For this tactic, there's only two reversals, and the first one is Dead Silence. Dead Silence does three things. The first one is that it suppresses all ambient sounds. Next, it widens your field of view and gives you a speed boost. Last, of course, it makes your footsteps silence. If you have Dead Silence, as long as you don't slam doors or break windows, you can ignore the last 10 minutes and be as aggressive as you like. Just to show you how effective it is, when you have the talents on, you can get so close to them. I could even give this guy a hug. Hey, you, come here, come here. The last part to this reversal actually comes from reversing the law within itself. When you drop in hot areas, 
you can actually use sound to then lure the enemy out. I'm about to finish the scavenger contract, and I know that the minute that I open up this loot box, they're gonna come crawling out of the woodwork. There he is. Call of Duty, inherently, is a game of sound and milliseconds. It's extremely difficult to transverse the map and not make a single sound. But that's the beauty of it. With almost every action audible, flying under the sound threshold is even easier, as long as you're cautious. It rewards the self-aware and punishes the clumsy. Your crouched footsteps, your door peeking, are all mere pin drops to a careless player and their grotesque movements. In that immense pocket of silence, that's where you thrive. Let them slam, stomp, let them break, let them give away their position, and they will never see you coming. <laughs>